folks, Pesach is coming soon. And we are going to continue the topic that we talked last week, and that's all about Seder Nights. But before we start, I want to announce that we're going to have a Simulate Seder at Thursday night, 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. We're going we're gonna to make as a pedenting, a demonstration of sitting with the children and singing song and uh, uh, we'll then pass it over and you will see uh, how it looks like. Okay, just before we continue to Motsi Matzah and Maro, I would like to share with you a brief story uh, since Magid, that's the main and the primary story that's going, that we are dealing with in the Seder. After the Second World War, people wanted to uh, commemorate and keep in mind and never forget the, the, the terrible things that happened with the Nazis, Machshimam. So they thought of different ways how to do it. But first, before they decided, they all gathered together and came up with different ideas, different ways of remembering. I will never forget and be able to pass it over to the generations further on. The conclusion of that meeting was to commemorate it in three different ways. The first way was that each person will have kind of a necklace on it and with the number six to commemorate that six million people were murdered at the Holocaust. Okay. The second thing was that every year in a certain day, they will gather all the family together and they will talk and discuss and bring back memories, uh, things that happen in the Shoah, in the Holy Ghost. Okay. The third idea was that each person will put on his front door, on the door, on the post maybe, the number six to remember about those people that um, died. Six. One of the rabbis was sitting there and he stand up and he said, folks, I want to I wanna share with you my, my feelings. You know, we left the Exodus, Exodus from Egypt was 3,300 years ago. And more or less, that's exactly what we do, and that's exactly the way that we commemorate the Exodus from Egypt. In order not to avoid an, an, a person who will not, never come and say, I don't believe, I don't think it happened, uh, to uh, like uh, erase what happened with our fathers and fathers with our fathers. And look how beautiful is it. You came with a conclusion that we already wrote in our holy books. The first idea of writing, putting the number six on your door, we have a mezuzah. Each and every Jew has a mezuzah to remember and not forget the exodus from Egypt. Okay, let's continue. The necklace that you have with the number six, we have tzitzit to commemorate the Yitzhak Mitzrayim. The third thing that you suggest is sitting all together and chatting and talking about what happened and being, being, uh, bring back the, mem the memories. This is exactly what we're doing. De La Seder. That's the night that we all talk about De La Seder. And this is how we can learn that we are sh so strong with, with faith, in Muna, believing in what happened. Nobody can come and, and say and say it never happened, it never exists. We are truly and believably with what happened, and this is what we take further to our generations, exactly the way that you want to do it. How beautiful. So therefore, why I'm sharing with you this beautiful story? Because just before we continue and uh, continue to Motsi Matzah, I want you to know that in Magid, so that's the, that's the main story, Please share and talk and, and try to learn the Midrashim, what's, what was all about, and how powerful was the ten plagues and, and the, the Kiratam Sof. 
the splitting of the sea and all the spew and remarkable miracles that Hashem performed to us on in Egypt and furthermore 40 years in the desert. Um, and that's uh, the, um, the, the, main, the main thing that we can learn from Magid. Okay, so let's continue from Magid to Matsi Matzah. We finished talking and chatting and um, all the observations that we have from Magid. We continue to Motsi Matzah. So as we know, we have three matzot, but one of the, uh, the middle matzah is broken, right? As you can remember last week we said, half of that matzah, we gave it to Afikoman. And we're going to eat it only after uh, Shulchan Orech. So as it is, we take those three matzot, not before that we first wash our hands and recite the bracha, yeah? Recite the bracha, Anita Didaim. Not like when we dip the karpas in the salt in the salt of water we didn't say a bracha. But here, as usual, when you wash hands for bread, and now matzah is considered bread. We say the bracha, shekdishano, mutabitsivano, al nitladidain, we wash our hands. Okay, then obviously we don't talk, we immediately go to the table and the leading, the balabait, the leading of the table, the one is that conducting the Zela Seder, he takes those three matzot. Raise it up, raise it up, and said the bracha. He says first, "Hamotzi lechem in aretz." Then he drops the down the 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 the, the matzah that it's below the put it, and he holds the broken matzah and the whole matzah. Okay, and then he says, "Baruch atah Hashem and Gimel Cholam, Hashem kidishanu to etzivanu al achilat matzah." And he takes the the best way to do is to take two uh, each from each matzah. A volume, a size of kazait, and he eats it. He eats this. There is matzot. But now, when you have many people that you need to share with them the matzot, so the halacha is first that you eat a bit of matzah without leaning on your left, without reclining on your left. You eat it a bit of a, a bit of the matzah, and then you give to all your family or all your guests, and then you take and you give to each one two kazatot. Uh, one kazait uh, from the broken one and if you don't have enough you can use the other matzot that you have obviously because most likely you will not have enough so you take uh, uh, each one gets two kazatot and have to eat it while they're uh, leaning on the left okay now some rabbis are very stringent and they say stringent approach brings down that they need to eat it in one shot um, but other rabbis say that if you eat in one shot, they will recommend this person to order an uh, ambulance in, in the Erev Pesach, that what, right when he eats the two kazatot, the ambulance will come immediately and uh, take him to the hospital. It's, it's impossible to do it, impossible, it's difficult to do it. And it doesn't, in the Kod al it's not a requirement that we have to do. So obviously we can eat slowly, slowly two kazatot. Now, the volume of kazait is 27 grams, okay? Some hold that it's less, 18 grams. But obviously, we are holding the strict opinion here, and we're eating, we, we uh, consider matzah, a gram of kazait, 27 grams. But <coughs> those that don't feel well, those that can't eat matzah um, for any reason, ill, old, so they can uh, rely on this lenient opinion, uh, but then they will not can say the bracha of Motzi Lechem in Aretz because they didn't eat an Erev Kazait. But still they can have uh, Motzi Matzah because Achilat um, uh, sorry, because they um, they are still eating Matzah. Okay, now I will talk, um, I want to share with you the, the general argument, the dispute between the rabbis if we can eat Matzah that was soaked in water. Okay? Now, the first rabbi to bring this strict opinion is Balatanya. And he says, maybe before, but everyone knows that this is the Balatanya. He is the one that to bring down the Salah not to deep the matzah in water, since we are concerned that some of the places in the surface of the matzah are not baked enough. And then you're making kind of, kind of bread, okay? Uh, with the water with the flour, it, it, makes, it becomes dough and then you're eating chametz. But 
the majority of the rabbis, the majority of the poskim are not uh, concerned about this uh, um, problem, situation. And they say, definitely you can soak the matzah in water and you can eat it at, as it is. But, you need to be careful not to eat matzah mavushelet. What is matzah mavushelet? Matzah, a boiled matzah. Boiled matzah, that means you put the matzah, for instance, we'll say, somebody wants to say, I'm matzah, and then take matzah and dip it in the hot, boiling hot uh, soup, let's say, for instance. And then he eats it. Then he will not fulfill the obligation of the mitzvah of a mutzi matzah. Therefore, he needs to eat plain, plain matzah without any water. As we say, if a person is necessarily for him, as he's ill, his teeth, his gums, he feels difficult to, to eat it, so he can soak it in water. Plain water, not hot water. But definitely, in according to all opinions, we are not allowed to eat matzah while it was deep, deep in hot boiling water. Okay? That's a mutzi matzah. And then let's continue to uh, maro. Okay? Uh, what we do is the maro that we say bracha asher kedishanu tzivanu al achilat maro. We take a maro, a kazait, as we said, 27 uh, gram, and we dip, dip it in charos. Yeah, Ashkenazim eat uh, the horseradish, but we eat the marol, the letters, and we dip in the charoset. We don't dip, we don't dip it very, we don't put it very deep in the charoset, because still we need to feel the flavor, the taste of the bitterness of the marol, and therefore we just dip it momentarily, and then we eat it. Okay, we eat it, but we don't recline. We don't eat it as it is. We don't, uh, we don't do any esava. We don't lean on our left. Um, okay, so tomorrow we'll continue with Korech, Al, and Shukhan Orech. All the very best, and love you guys.